Then about probably four years later, I applied for a promotion. I had a book out, got my senior lectureship, and then from there on, um, I've been doing you know the usual thing of teaching and research, but also lots of administration inside a department, outside of the department. So I've been things like the chair of the board of studies, member of UTC, member of the public lectures committee, lots of other jobs. Having been on a lot of interview panels, if people can show that they are able to address the diversity of students, um, so gaining experience in more than one place can be incredibly beneficial. Spending time abroad as, for example, a fellow, I spent half a year in the US, again, incredibly useful in the sense of you know, the people that you meet, the ideas that you get exposed to. So when I went for my promotion here uh, at York, this was 2007 at the time, and so I'd been a reader at the time, and I was looking at uh, potentially going for promotion. I wasn't sure whether I would go at this point, because sometimes it, you're never quite sure the lack of confidence, I guess, in one's own ability, and whether you think you've got enough um, to go for promotion. So I took advice off some senior colleagues, I chatted to people, and they advised me to, to, to have a go. Um, but be prepared not to get it. Yeah. And I think you have to accept that. You have to, When you go for a promotion, you have to accept that you might not get it, and you have to be okay with that. And so I put my application in, uh, and it was quite difficult actually because you have to kind of evidence a lot for a chair position. Um, you have to evidence international leadership and scientific excellence and, and make sure it's consistent and sustained. Uh, and so, you know, you need to gather lots of evidence together. It took a long time actually to put the proposal, the, the application, sorry, together. But I did and, um, and I got it. Uh, I got it first time uh, around and I was thrilled. All the while, while I was a postdoc, one of my main priorities was to get out as many publications in high-ranking journals as possible. Later on, I then applied for a position here at the University of York. And again, I think it, it's those first few years as a researcher that allowed me to build up um, a portfolio of publications that then gave my CV the, the strength to be considered for more senior academic positions. Very soon after taking up the position here as lecturer, um, a, a senior colleague left and the position of a senior lecturer was advertised in the department. And I applied for that um, as an internal candidate and I didn't get that position. It was an experience that I wouldn't now want to miss, although it was disappointing at the time. I decided to wait for another year and then went through the normal promotion process and was successful in promoted to senior lecturer. So now I'm the head of department and I've been in that role for just under two years. I think the kind of qualities you need as an academic are to be resilient and because failure does happen a lot, even when you're a, even when you're a chair, right? You still get papers rejected and you still get grants rejected. And so that doesn't go away. And so you have to learn that you don't always get what you ask for. You have to learn to pick yourself up really quickly and be a bit tough on that. And it's just reality. I think you need to be adaptable as well. And I think um, academic, um, as an academic, things change. Your subject changes, how you interact with other subjects changes. And now interdisciplinarity is key to solving some of the major challenges now we face. So you have to learn to work with other disciplines. This is something that you didn't necessarily do 15, 20 years ago. And so you need to adapt. And I think you need to be able to say, I have my core set of skills that I know very well. How can I use that to best ability in another area? And learning how to communicate and talk with other people is, is absolutely key. I think in terms of personal attributes and skills and, and attitudes, really, that um, I felt most useful to develop was um, really dealing with setbacks. You experience situations as I did when I applied for internal promotion and wasn't successful, that others are um, just as strong or even stronger in, in their you know, in the very skills and, and um, characteristics you have to have. And just learning to, to deal with that and um, drawing on support from other colleagues and really seeking out feedback on the things that you could improve while at the same time remaining um, confident that this is what you want to do and this is what you feel passionate about and therefore this is what you uh, are going to invest your efforts in. I think like probably everyone will tell you as an academic you need to learn to cope with rejection. Um, you know I can give you an example that just over the Christmas vacation I submitted two applications for a fellowship. I got neither. 
and that is very common for you know one thing that you are successful at there's often five things that you are not successful at so to get your article in that journal you've written lots of others that got absolutely nowhere you need to learn to develop that kind of thick skin about you know I, I you know just get on with it start again and persevere if you do get a article that gets back to you or a response saying revise and resubmit do it follow up what the reverie is saying because quite often it is the case that articles that have been given that verdict do get eventually published. In terms of the mentoring roles and the support that I've received from other colleagues, I would say um, some of the most helpful support has come from senior women in positions that I now hold but didn't hold at the time. When I came here to York, um, again, I had a, a head of department who was a, a strong, very successful female professor, so that played a huge role. So I think what's helped me from an institutional perspective with my career, um, one would be the support of my colleagues. And I think having good colleagues around you who are willing, who are willing to talk to you and give advice, open, honest advice, is absolutely crucial. When you change roles in, as an academic and you go from being like a postdoc to a lecturer, lecturer to senior lecturer, and as you go through the scale, each job is different and each job comes with an expectation that you might not necessarily realise. Um, and I think you need to be prepared for that. I had a very good set of training last year, in fact, um, uh, before I took over as, as, as head of department on kind of more strategic management and that I found was excellent. I've been very fortunate in being able to actually commercialise some of my research over the last couple of years. The, the process we went through to spin out was supported by the university, so we went with the idea, Mark and myself went with the idea of uh, so commercialising our technologies. Um, the university were very supportive and they gave us the opportunity, some a little bit of pump priming money to explore that aspect. Um, most departments these days will have um mentors or buddies, whatever they call them, to help new staff. That person can help you to think about where you want to be. Um, what I've done quite a few years ago is do one of these workshops where you sit out and develop a plan, like a career plan, and you can map out and see where you are. But then a lot of it is, is depending on you to see where the opportunities are. So it's about you seeking out the support that is available there. Um, and not wait for support to come to you. I think that's, that's a crucial thing. And so I think my advice would actually be to seek out people that you perceive could be, maybe not even a role model, but somebody who's doing a similar job from you, but just a few years on, or maybe the kind of job that you would like to be doing in a few years, to seek them out and actually ask any question that you might have, advice, support and so on. The main advice that I would give in terms of thinking about your own career is actually to stay open-minded. That's been the best decision professionally to perhaps not listen to those critical voices too much and think about, oh, what's going to be the most strategic move in my career in terms of a traditional academic career, but just to try out something that looked a little bit different and challenging. I think one of the most important things is, is the opportunities. Make most of the opportunities. And they can be, you know, um, you seeking them actively out, but it can also be that something ends up effectively in your lap. And show initiative, I think that's the crucial thing as well. Uh, develop something. If you are asked to do a role, make it yours. Develop it in the way you want. And I think that, that's very important. And I think another top tip I would probably give is, is generally be be a nice and kind person. Um, you need people to help you, to support you. But also thinking further, if you're at conferences, um, chat to people, get to know them. They might be the people who eventually get asked to be the referee for your promotion application, or they might be asked to review your grant application or your article. Um, so it's, I think it is it's generally be nice and kind and be open to whatever is going on around you. Take an interest in higher education. Read the Times higher. I would say that's a very good one, if anything. So the, 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 the advice I had from my first head of department in my academic life uh, was, he said, build a good research group around you. Collaborate and build a good research group around you. He said it will take time, but once you've done that, you will gain momentum and you'll be able to do so much more than if you just work on your own. 
and I took his advice and it worked. Another key piece of advice I would give is that you need to enjoy what you do above anything else. And if you don't enjoy it, don't do it. That would be for me the key thing. After that, it's being adaptable. Yeah, uh, and making sure you know you can see an opportunity and you're willing to take a risk on it. And not all the opportunities that come your way will pay off, but some will. And it's having the courage sometimes to take an opportunity, do something slightly less ordinary. And I think being an academic is a vocation. It's not just a job, it's a way of life. And I think um, if you're considering it as a career, I think you've got to see it like that. It's not a nine to five thing. Um, it doesn't have to be like that. It can be a, a passion and you can speak your passion and you get paid for it too.